putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. I have to tell you, when this Weinstein story broke, I knew it was a big deal, but I said to myself, you know, we'll cover a few segments of this and it'll be done. And even though I knew it was a big deal, I just didn't think it was going to be radio worthy. And I'll tell you another thing. We wrote about it and I thought, you know, this is a really good story. And the reaction to people when we were uh, wrote about it was pretty small. I mean, we gauge it by Google Plus hits and Facebook, uh, you know, retweets and shares and all that. And it didn't do very well. And I remember thinking, do people really get how big this is? But maybe we don't need to cover it. I don't know if it's going to end up in the news cycle very much, et cetera. And, and sure enough, boom, it starts gaining momentum, gaining momentum. Now, the whole time you guys have heard the show, I've been telling you, big deal, folks. This is not a little story. It'll, it'll grow legs. It'll get bigger. But I just didn't, I, I honestly thought when it got bigger, we talk about it. I didn't think it would be this kind of slow burn. And I've looked back over the past few shows and we've talked about it a lot. And I don't want you to think there's not other stuff going on. There is, there's, you know, a lot of things we could talk about and we will talk about stuff. Judicial watch is suing Obama and all kinds of stuff. But this is becoming a big deal as it unravels. And I, I'm starting to sound like, I feel like I'm sounding like Alex Jones. You wait till you see what I'm about to show. <laughs> and I've never watched an Alex Jones episode, but I figure he's got to be like that. But no, seriously, this is a huge story. And here's why. Because I said, Weinstein may be, be about to commit suicide with a bullet to the back of his head shot twice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> a lot of people have the potential to get caught up in what Weinstein, what's going on with this man. Hollywood is buzzing again. And this is about a New Yorker piece that's rumored to detail far worse and from more people. And here's what uh, they said, uh, an article that said, absolutely, I'm positive that more women will come forward. That I am not alone. It was kind of a horrible kept secret in Hollywood that he had this type of behavior. And this was from that girl. I played her clip the other day. Her name is Lauren Siven or Uh, She's a former Fox News reporter. She was on Megyn Kelly's show. She says people would whisper about it all the time. Huh. She says before too long, we're going to be talking about more than just Harvey Weinstein. That's what I'm telling you, folks. That's where this is going to get interesting. This article says the same whisper network that allowed an entire industry to know about Weinstein's vile abuses for years carries other names. Some are bigger names than Weinstein, powerful, popular men whose prominence requires no explanation outside of Hollywood. Some names are on Weinstein's level. Some are lesser known. All of them work in the business whose gatekeepers have been using their powers as levers to ply sex from the less powerful since time immemorial. In memorial. Now, I was telling you guys, this is the same thing I feel about college professors. You send your kids to college and the people who hold their futures in their hands are the most lecherous people on the planet. They're just like the Weinsteins of the world. Don't be fooled, folks. And this is why I tell you, you got to be very careful with leftists. Anyway, here's uh, this thing goes on to say this. All of them work in the business whose gatekeepers have been used using power as levers to apply sex from less powerful since time immemorial. The casting couch is a shabby, repulsive cliche, but it also carries a kernel of truth. Those gatekeepers are sometimes moguls, but they're also directors, agents, financiers, screenwriters, even journalists. So I'm just telling you. When you wonder how the media is in cabal with the Clintons, is in cabal with the the Democrat Party, is in cabal with Hollywood and so on and so forth, you're looking at it. This article goes on to say this. Yes, the very profession that moved Weinstein from open secret to bombshell report has its share of names on the Whisper Network, too. Some have very recently fallen. Others are still operating out there openly tweeting about the Weinstein story, maybe even working on it in some capacity. Getting those names out into the open is no easy feat. It requires a little luck and at least one enormously courageous person. I want you to think about the whistleblowers 
that have come during the time of Obama that have exposed Lois Lerner. They expose Hillary Clinton and the lie of, of, uh, you know, the video and Benghazi and the, the drug running and the VA and Eric, Eric Snowden and others. I want you to think about them. And, and where are they? These people that have disappeared, you can't get anything out of them or they're, they've run from the country. This has been long overdue. And they said the New York Times expo- expose was a high risk, high degree of difficulty journalistic maneuver that required two key elements to be foot to print. An internal document which was clearly leaked from within the Weinstein company and at least one high profile accuser willing to go on the record. In this case, the actress Ashley Judd. Now, I've given Judd grief because she knows that this is something that should have been exposed years ago, but she didn't have the guts. I think we talked about this in 2014 or 2004, maybe. Yeah, 2004. They tried to expose Weinstein at the time and nobody would do anything. Matt Damon, the Russell Crowe stood up for him, vouched for the guy. He was already two decades fully into this nonsense. They go on to say this. Take away one of these elements and the rest of the story stays just whispers. This is stuff you can't say on a page without those elements. And even if you do have them, you risk destructive litigation and painful profession and social fallout. Weinstein may have since been fired from the company he co-founded, but he vowed to sue the times and seems bent on leveraging every relationship he still has to make a comeback, to mount a comeback. Janice Men, you're going to love this when I read to you in a second. The venerable former editor of The Hollywood Reporter tweeted a transcript of the letter Weinstein purportedly sent to his powerful friends as he was scrambling to save his place in the industry. And I want to I want to show I want to read this letter. <laughs> this is amazing. So here's what he wrote. My board is thinking of firing me. All I'm asking is let me take a leave of absence and get into heavy therapy and counseling, whether it be in a facility or somewhere else. Allow me to resurrect myself with a second chance. A lot of the allegations are false, as you know, but given therapy and counseling as other people have done, I think I'll be able to get there. (laughs) I mean, that in and of itself tells you all about this monster. A lot of the allegations are false, as you know, but giving counseling, uh, did he mean true? No, he meant false. He goes on. I could really use your support or just your honesty if you can't support me. He's wanting to know who's still going to be my friend because he's he's effectively making a veiled threat. In my opinion, that's what he's doing. What what do you mean? What you why do you give people a choice? Of course, I have a choice if I support you or don't. If I don't, I don't respond. If I do, I respond. Just let me know if you don't support me. Says no body that wants your support ever. You send out a letter. It says, hey, look, everybody, I'm about to go do blankety blank. I'm going on a trip to such and such to help needy people. I'd love to have your support. You can make your donations here. You want to know how you know they support you? Go look at the donation chart. If they didn't donate, they don't support you. But he goes on to say this. But if you can, I need you to send a letter to my private Gmail address. The letter would only go to the board and no one else. We believe what the board is trying to do is not only wrong, but <clears throat> excuse me, but might be illegal and would destroy the company. If you could write this letter backing me, getting me the help and time away I need, and also stating your opposition to the board firing me it would help me a lot. I am desperate for your help. Just give me the time to have therapy. Do not let me be fired. If the industry supports me, that is all I need. That I believe he wrote. Desperate Hollywood CEOs and moguls, hours hours rather before he got fired, he's begging people, please help. If I could just save my place here, I can go back to all those accolades and I could be what people want me to be. I could be what they thought I was, you know, what the perception is. We can go back to square one, guys. Don't do it. Now, the question is, is he going to say or else? Because I bet you Weinstein knows where a few bones are buried. You better know if people know what this guy's doing, they're, they're like, uh, Harvey's a freak. I'll go check out. Hey, Harvey, I got a, I got a young one you might want to check out. Really? What's she look like? 
Yeah. Have her come to my party. Hey, have her on my jet. Well, I'll have her go to Paris with me. I mean, that's what they do. Folks, this is about to get ugly for Hollywood and ugly for the left. And people behind the scenes are scrambling. Like This is like WikiLeaks was to Hillary Clinton and all the stuff that he that Julian Assange found out. Only, I think it's going to be far worse. They don't have the protection of Obama. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.